Greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Elder R.L. Dunlap Jr. Coming out to you with the only infallible, the only uncompromising, the only unadulterated written word of God. We greet you from God the Father and from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and is now set on the right hand of the Father, according to the Scripture. You are not tuned in to the whole truth, uncompromising, unadulterated word telecast. God bless you. People, let me say this before, before I get started. At the time when you view this, we've had so many tragedies, earthquakes and flooding and hurricanes, and shootings and all that, plane crashes and murder, mayhem, all that. People, we don't know where death is. <coughs> We don't know when we're going to leave this earth. We do not know. The people that lost their lives last night in Las Vegas, the people that lost their lives two weeks ago during the hurricane, the people that lost their, li their lives one week ago during the earthquake in Mexico, they had no idea that they were going to lose their life. They had no idea. We don't know where death is. We don't know. We do not know. And it pays us to be ready. Because after death, we're going to be woke up from death. And we're going to have to stand before God in judgment. And if we did not obey God while we were alive and keep His commandments and do what He told us to do, we're going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and we're going to burn forever and ever and ever non-stop and you're not going to die but it's going to continue to burn that's a script tormented day and night forever so it pays us to be ready we don't know what death is it pays us to be ready we don't know. You could die right now. I can die right now while I'm talking to you. I can drop dead. We don't know where death is. It pays us to be ready. And the only way to be ready is to obey the scripture. Obey the scripture. Obey the Bible. That's the only way to be ready. People tell you well, let me say it this way. Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's not in, that is not in the Bible nowhere. That is not in the Bible. I dare you to find it. I challenge you to find it. Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior is not in the Bible nowhere. <clears throat> Jesus Christ himself, he never said, accept me as your personal Savior. The disciples and the apostles, they never said in preach, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. They never preached that. It's not in the Bible. But I tell you what is in the Bible. Now accepting Christ as your Savior, that's not in the Bible. The blood covering your sin, that's not in the Bible. Nowhere. You will be forgiven for past sin, present sin, and future sin. That's true, but that's on condition. On condition. 
Not on the condition that you accept Christ your personal Savior, but on the condition that you do one thing. Let's read. Let's read what's in the Bible. St. Mark. And I'm just about through. St. Mark 1. And 17. Listen to what Jesus said. And when Jesus heard it, St. Mark, I'm sorry, St. Mark the second chapter. St. Mark the second chapter. Get your Bible. Get the Bible preacher. Some of you in the church of God Christ, get your Bible. You backslid years ago. You backslid. You used to preach holiness and sanctification and righteousness, but you backslid. Because you want to be like Billy Graham in TB, in not TB, in PTL, People Tell the Lie Club. That's their nickname. Your backslid. Get your Bible. Accepting Christ as Savior is nowhere in the Bible. Let's read what's in the Bible. And you got to do what's in the Bible in order for you to be saved. <clears throat> your past, present, and future sins forgiven. That's on condition. Of you doing something. It's not automatic. St. Mark the second chapter in the 17th verse. Get your Bible bishop. Apostle. Get your Bibles. You in hell bound seminary and Bible school. Get your Bibles. You ain't learning this in your Bible class. Get your Bibles. St. Mark the second chapter and the 17th verse. When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, listen to Jesus. Jesus said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician. Now, this ain't talking about you got high blood pressure and all that. It ain't talking about that. They that are whole need not a physician. But they that are sick, listen to, what, listen to Jesus. Forget what your pastor said. Forget what your bishop said. Forget what those that the church of God cried their backs lit. Forget what they said. Then what Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You must, Jesus Christ said he didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Sin a man, sin a woman, sin a boy, sin a girl, sin a bishop, sin a apostle, sin a church of God in Christ, sin a apostolic faith, sin a Baptist, sin a fivefold, sin a deacon, sin a choir member, sin that don't go to church. Jesus Christ said, I come not to call the righteous. But sinners to repentance. Jesus is saying, sinner man, you got to repent of your sin. You got to repent. I say you got to do it. Jesus said, you got, you got to repent. All right. Go over one chapter. Let's see what Jesus said. No, accepting Christ as Savior is nowhere in the Bible. Let's see what Jesus said. Look, if you if you if you give them what the words say, if you do what the words say, oh, you safe. <laughs> if you do what the words say, preacher, bishop, apostle, if you preach what the words say, you say. Preacher, you ain't gonna have no excuse. You going to hell preaching false doctrine, preaching what the word don't say. Preach yourself Christ, your person saved. That's not the scripture. 
Now what back over one, Mark one and fifteen. Look at what Jesus said. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. He, Jesus said repent. Uh -huh. Except that Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, is nowhere in the scripture. All right. Go to St. John. Three, you read 16 and 17 and you stop. What's a stop for? Who told you to stop? St. John 3. And we're going to start with the 16. The favorite scripture. You know the world take their scripture too. Have billboards and signs. St. John 3, 16. And they don't believe it. St. John 3, except that Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, is not in the Bible. <clears throat> Watch this, St. John 3. Look at, let's start with 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What do what it be is saved? Being saved. That means you ain't gonna perish. What is perish? You going to hell, fire and brimstone after death when you step before God in judgment. And Jesus said, depart from me, you that work iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin. You better stop it. You better repent. Do what he said. Repent. Watch it. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Watch it. Now that's where they stop it. He that believed on him is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This show you condemn. This show you condemn. This show you condemn. Read. 19 verse. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. For men love darkness rather than light. That what makes you condemn. You love darkness rather than light. You love sin rather than righteousness. You love sin. You love to disobey rather than obey Jesus. And Jesus told nobody to sin. You love it. That's why you keep doing it because you love it. That's why you don't stop because you love it. You love what you're doing. You don't stop. You continue it on. Never stop. You don't even think about stopping. <laughs> you, 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 you go to church thinking about, thinking about what I'm going to do, what darkness I'm going to do when I get out of the church. You go to church doing saying that. Oh, uh, for your information, I've been there. I've been there. I'm in church, sitting down at church, and I'm, I'm thinking about that woman house I'm going to go over when I get out of church. And, 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 and when church out, we, there wasn't no cell phone back then. When church out, I go in the hallway on the church phone and call. Hey, baby, I'm, I'm coming over. I've been there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been there. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm not there now, but I've been there. 
Men love darkness rather than light. That's a condemnation. You love what you're doing, and you ain't even trying to stop. You ain't thinking about stopping. Yet you jumping and shouting and falling out and talking in some kind of tongue and holding position and holding it off and, and preaching saying it's holding the hell. And lead you right out of the pool pit. And go and commit evil. Men love darkness rather than light. Watch it. How you know they love darkness rather than light? Because their deeds are evil. Your deeds. What you do. What you do is evil. What you do is sin. You doing sin, honey. You doing sin. You ain't doing righteous. You're doing sin. That's a condemnation. You're sinning. You're condemned already. You sinning. You commit sin. You condemned already. Let me read, let me read a little more what Jesus said. Because their deeds are evil. Look what he said. Everyone that do a deed will hate light. You hate the light. Jesus said I just said, Jesus said, you come in sin, you hate the light. You don't want to stop. You have no desire to stop. You hate the light. You won't stop. You will not repent. You hate the light. You hate it. Jesus saying this, I'm not. Jesus saying, for everyone do it, you hate light. Neither, neither come into the light, you ain't even come to the light. You didn't accept Christ your personal Savior, which is nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere. Neither come into the light. What gonna happen if you come to the light? If all everyone that do it even hate light, neither come into the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. When you come to Jesus, sincere, your deeds gonna be reproved. Your deeds going to be corrected. You're going to be corrected. You're going to stop doing evil deeds. You're going to stop your sin. You're going to repent of your sin. All right. All right. Read next verse. But he that do it true come to the light. And so you come to the light. You stop what you're doing. You stop your evil deeds. You stop your doctrine. You stop your sin. That's what show you came to the light. You commit sin. You ain't saying. You ain't saying. You're not saved, I said. Well, what if I what if I fall and make a mistake? If you show no say, you'll get back up and stop. If you're saved, you will get up and stop. No saved person can continue in sin. I I don't care if they be, I don't care if they were walking after the flesh. I don't care if you walking after the flesh. You weren't praying. You weren't consecrating yourself. And you hang around the wrong folks. And they lure you back in sin. I don't care if that's the case. If you save, you can't live in that state. If you save, you cannot continue to sin. You can't do it. It's impossible. You can't continue to sin. Romans 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That great may abound. God forbid. How can we that are dead and sin live alone with any? Uh, you can't do it. You can't do it. You commit sin. You ain't saved. You're not saved. You, I mean, I mean, you just have to commit sin. You do what you want to do. It ain't bothering you. You ain't even thinking about repenting. And you're bold about it. you're bold about the stuff. You know, folk used to have you know, folk used to hide years ago. They had no respect for God, even backslide. They had no respect for God and God's word to at least hide. They don't hide no more. They out in open doing their stuff. Out in open. <laughs> but he that do it true come to the light. <clears throat> That his deed may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Ain't no sin wrought in God. Sinful deeds are not wrought in God. They wrought in the devil. Get, I want you to understand. I want you to understand. 
Jesus never told nobody to say it. God never told nobody to say it. Not even one time. He didn't tell nobody to do that. <clears throat> if you see it, hang around the wrong folks and, you know, tempted and all that, and you fall, if you say, if you show no say, if you show no how Jesus, you can't stay down there. You can't continue. You can't continue. You can't continue. You'll get up. You can't continue. You'll, uh, uh, you'll start preaching like Zola. You'll start preaching just like Zola did. <laughs> Zola gonna go, gonna run, run away from the presence of God, and all of a sudden the stone came up. He didn't tell nobody he was a prophet. He didn't tell nobody he was a man of God. A stone came up. And Zola started preaching. This is my fault. I'm a prophet. You, my God, you can't get away. <laughs> I, I mean, I know many, I know backsliders that preach. I know backsliders that preach. And they ain't gonna lie on the word. Though they're backsliding, they ain't living it. One told me one time. He said, look. And it was years ago. He said, look, I'm a backslider. He said, I'm a backslider. I backslid. But let me tell you something. That Holy Ghost is real. The Word is real. But I'm a backslider. But the Word is real. The Holy Ghost is real. <laughs> Except that Jesus Christ your personal Savior and righteousness is actually. They don't care who see. Except that Jesus Christ your personal Savior is not in the Scripture. What is in the scripture? Repent. All right. Preacher, God ain't told you to preach except Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. Jesus didn't tell you to preach that. Let's see what Jesus told you to preach. We're going to knock off. <clears throat> Go to St. Luke 24. 24. St. Luke 24. Let's see what Jesus told you to preach. Did Jesus say preach except Christ and, and your personal Savior? Did the apostle say preach that? Let's see what Jesus told you to preach when he rose. St. Luke 24, 45. St. Luke 24, 45. These are the words of Jesus. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And he said unto them, Thus it is written. Thus he gave a script. He explained the script. Thus it is written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day. This is after Christ rose. Okay? And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's what Jesus told his preachers to preach. Why are you preaching the self Christ and Savior? He didn't tell you to preach that. That's not in the scripture nowhere. That's not in the scripture. Well, let's see what the apostles preach. Maybe they preach the self Christ and Savior. Let's see what they preach. Go to the book of Acts, the second chapter. Acts 2 and 37. 38. Hear what Peter told them to do. Then Peter said unto them, Repent! That's what Christ said, preach, repent. That's what we just read, what Christ told the priest of the priest, repent in the remission of sin. Look at Peter preach. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sin. Uh -huh. Let's see. Let's go a little further. Maybe, maybe Seth Christ the Savior is over here. <clears throat> Act 319. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out when the times of refreshment shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repent. 
Yeah, that's what they bring. And so Christ saves not in that. It's not in there. You gotta preach what Jesus said, preach. Or oh, else, preacher, you going to hell. Uh -huh. Did you hear me? Well, let's see, let's see what God. Let's see. Let's go to Acts eighteen thirty. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Uh huh. That's what he told me, pretty. That's what the man got to do is to repent. Well, let go of 2 Peter 3 and 9. 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slacking, but is long suffering to us, with not willing that they should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, let's see about present sins and future sins. Y'all say past, present, and future sins will be forgiven. That's on condition if you do something. You got to do something in order for your present sins to be forgiven and your future sins to be forgiven. Number one, don't look to sin in the future. Why are you looking to the future to sin? You expect to sin in the future? But let's see what happens if you sin. Let's look at present sin and future sin. Let's take, let's look at that. Go to Revelation. This to the text. The text. See, the text is that had present sins. Mm -hmm. Go to Revelation, the second chapter. This is and this is Jesus talking. Let's look at what they do with the present sin. <clears throat> Revelation uh, two four. Leave the word of Jesus. Nevertheless, this to the church. Nevertheless, I have someone against thee because thou left thy first love. Jesus said, I got something against you. One thing, not a long laundry list. One thing. One thing I got against you. Do you not know that one thing will keep you out of heaven? One thing. One thing. I have someone against you because you left your first love. That's one thing. Now what did Jesus, that present sin of the text, what did Jesus tell them to do? Remember therefore, for when thou art fallen, you fail. And you, and you still live in the church, but you fail. You still shout, but you fail. Huh? You're still doing a whole lot of things right, but you fail. One thing. Remember for when thou have fallen, and repent. Jesus said to the church, present sin, repent. Present sin, repent. You got sin, repent. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That present sin. Well, let's look at another church. Let's look at another church. <clears throat> Stay in chapter 2. And go to 2 and 16. Well, 214. This to the church. Present sin. Revelation 214. I have a few things against you. It wasn't the one thing on that church. On that church. This is a few things. I have a few things against you. <laughs> because thou. Had them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam to be a stubborn block before children, to eat things like right out and to commit uh, fornication. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaus, which I hate. You you got them. All right, you got the false prophets in your church. That gets it. What did Jesus tell them to do? Present sin. That's what they were doing. 
And Jesus called them out and pointed out what they were doing. What Jesus said, verse 16, repent, or else I'll come to you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Repent. All right, let's let, 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 let look at nothing. <clears throat> Go to tw verse 22. There's another tip. Behold, I will cast, well, 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you. I got a few things against you. See, Jesus ain't no play toy. Your pastor is. Jesus ain't nothing to play with. And it went on toll. But look, look what, look, look, look what, look, look, look at 21. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. She repented not. God gives you a chance to repent. He gives you a chance. You alive now and you walking in sin. You in the church and you have sin. God giving you a chance to repent. Now you better take heed. Look at what he said. I gave her a space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. She did not repent. God gave you a chance, and you're not repenting. What did he say? Look at what he said. Behold, I will cast her into her bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. They, they take care of present sin. Well, what about future sin? You looking to commit sin in the future? You, wait a minute. You looking to commit sin in the future? You really expect to commit sin in the future? That, that what you expect to do? You need to be saved. They say, well, past, past, and future sin is forgiven. No, they ain't. Not until you repent. If you don't repent, they're not forgiven. All right, let me knock out right here. On tomorrow, God willing, tomorrow's telecast, we're going to talk about believing. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe it. Jesus did say believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe he died and rose again, thou shalt be saved. We're going to show you what the scripture, most people that call themselves Christians, I said most, that we know, that call themselves Christians, most preachers that we know, that call themselves Christians, I'm going to show you where most do you say you believe. I'm going to show you where you don't believe. I'm going to show you where you, I'm going to show you what the Bible you do not believe. We're going to talk about believing. What is believing? What is believing? We're going to take the Bible on tomorrow, God willing. We're going to show you what believing is. We're going to show you where you don't believe. You don't believe. We're going to show you. You don't believe. All right. That's enough of that. God bless you. God keep you. In my matter of fact, let me say this now. <clears throat> you ain't obeying Jesus and following Jesus. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't. You're there talking. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you all for very